What is going on, everybody? This is Serge Vicente. You guys might know me from, honestly, the best you know, show on the scrap news in terms of, you know, pro wrestling. But you also might know me from uh, many other shows in terms of the fight podcast and other things like that. But uh, today, what we're going to do, and one thing that we love doing on the scrap news is really going out here and talking about and really showing you guys up and coming guys and prospects that you might not know. Because yeah, we all know like the big stars and everything and all these main organizations, but what we want to tell you is the diamonds in the rough, the ones that you guys might not know just yet. And today, we're going to bring one of those guys on the show. I am telling you, I am so excited to talk to this dude because, especially in terms of light heavyweight, man, this dude seriously might end up being the next man up. Um, he is fighting right now. Again, he's an amateur. He's coming up, but we're going to talk to him again. We're going to see when he changes, when things are going to turn. So let me see really quick. We get this man on really fast for you guys. Cause I ain't even going to here. Let me get him going. Hope you guys are having a good, here we go. Boom. We're going to talk about it. And I really express to you guys how dope it is to talk to somebody who's up and coming and, and seeing the grind that they're doing comparison. Everybody's and there he is. My man. Lou Fernandez, man, what is going on? Welcome to the show, brother. How is everything? What's up? What's up? Everything's good. Everything's real good. Well, dude, first of all, man, congrats. Like I said, you just got a dub not too long ago. You know, you, you defended your next-gen CFFC championship, which was absolutely fire. And you went out there by absolutely coming down on top of this dude. Straight ground upon him out there, man. Yes. Always dangerous, man. And honestly... Four, five wins, you know what I'm saying? Four of them did finish, fam. Tell me a little bit about yourself, man. And, and, and again, why is it that aside from devastating finishes, why people should talk to you that you really see why you are the next man up? Because I think that is the case. Um, well, uh, my name is Luke Fernandez. I'm 26 years old. I fight out of Dante Rivera's uh, BJJ in New Jersey, free old New Jersey. I'm from uh, Forked right. Rivers. 40 minutes from my gym but um yeah I mean I'm just you know I just love doing this I just started I would say I just started fighting two years ago it'll be two years in July yeah. I'm looking at two years of like strict training uh, I wrestled in high school and college right and right I, that like I grew up watching boxing with my dad my dad's my hands coach so it was just something that I always was interested in, like okay. fighting I love competition I love competing and any type of thing where it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, absolutely where I, man uh, my craft and then go out there and just like show my stuff so fighting came naturally at that point once i started doing it, i loved it facts well dude i always see you going out there and again you you have a great team and one thing that i really want to ask you about the type because a lot of amateurs going to, i had an amateur career a lot of amateurs go out there and they're not handled the right way and no matter how talented they are and they're sitting there and you and you see them fighting for just nonsense you know promotions and things like that you on the other hand you're, you're the CFFC, you know, next-gen champion. I've said this time and time again. I think CFFC is one of the best, you know, regional promotions in the world, and you see some of the biggest stars come out of that. So being that you're already being groomed and you're in that pipeline, how is that for you? And again, and again, we're going to talk about when you turn in pro, but, but we're going to ask this one first. Like, so what's happening with that? How, how, do you, how has that been for you? So, I mean, I was fortunate enough. Uh, I'm, I'm under, like I said, Dante Rivera, and he has many connections. He fought on the biggest of stages, UFC, Bellator, you name it. He's been in the game for so long, and he knows the ins and outs of this game. And fortunate enough, he has um, pool and connections and stuff where he, he got me in uh, with my first debut fight, uh, amateur okay. CFFC. So I've been spoiled to know only, like, a very well – managed and run uh promotion so I, I like i said i've been spoiled yeah. and it's one of those things that on this side of doing it now it's i'm really fortunate because they like you said they are grooming me and it's i'm yeah. getting getting quality fights and it's all like just pr uh, produced in such a quality way where people are watching it and you would you wouldn't even know whether if it's an amateur or a, a pro event or if it's small or big like i've, I've seen other promotions that are uh, I guess technically on the same level, but it looks like they're fighting in the backyard or something. You know, it's I'm I'm fortunate enough to I'm I'm fighting for such a type of organization. So oh yeah, so, I mean I I can't thank the CFFC enough for really taking a liking to me and you know 
they do a lot for the fighters and just the way they promote and everything. So it's been awesome. And I'm very fortunate to be fighting for them and fighting for my gym where I have opportunities. All right, that's, that's so dope, man. I'll tell you one thing. That belt you're carrying around definitely doesn't look like a cheapy belt. That one looks legit as fuck. So we're happy that you're out here, you know what I'm saying, rocking and holding the belt down and everything. And really quick, man, obviously you're talking turning pro, but your team, your team, you have a, an, an up-and-coming team that you're seeing these dudes on here that obviously like yourself, your coach, people are starting to take notice. You know, so for you, brother, like, what is it like not only being an up-and-coming dude yourself, but you're now you're coming up with an up-and-coming team. How is that? Because you know how it is. So many guys are like, you got to go to the big teams. I got to go to ATT. I yeah. got to go to Sanford. I got to go here. I got to go there. You have a good quality squad. How is that? And understanding um, you. It's one of those things where, like, I look at it as, like, I'm an upcoming fighter. So, like, I – it's, it's like when you're a freshman, you're going into, like, collegiate sports. Like, that, that's when you're most hungry. You're, you're really looking to, to make a name for yourself and really get to that next level. And I feel like that's where every one of my teammates and myself included are at. So we're all just young, hungry dogs that go to the gym every day. And you can't lack because then you're going to be the odd man, man out. So I'm fortunate enough to have guys like Nick Lonte, uh Tristan mm -hmm. Mixa, Damien, you're going to – one of my boys, Damien, you're going to see him coming up on the scene soon. Uh, and then I got lighter weights like Jerry. Yeah, I got kids – I mean, we got kids in the gym like Eric Nolan, um, Nezar Dimes, uh, Dan Espo. All these guys are going to be on the scene. And we got vets that are that, that are that are still young in the game, but they've been fighting for so long, like F for Nestorino. Like, these guys are just guys that when I go in the gym, I know that I'm going to be getting after with them. And all, all three of the Kara Kappa brothers are in that gym too, and that's – they've been fighting forever. Um, like Phil's been fighting for right. a minute now, biggest of stages. So I'm fortunate enough to be in a room with all these guys mixing up. And like I said, you can't come without being on your A game and really trying to grow every day, or else right. you're gonna be you're gonna be drowning. And that's just how it is. And that's I love that environment. I think that's where I thrive. So, man, it sounds like you're in a space that's like the definition of iron sharpens iron. That that's what it it feels like. You know, it sounds like you're in there with dudes that are just hungry. Hungry Lions, you know, ready to go at him. That's sick. Yeah, that's well, cool. here's the question I, we got to ask, and Cass has been waiting for it. I mean, not many people have an opportunity to go out there and defend, you know, a, a, a an amateur belt even, you know. And the fact that you've done that at a high level in a place where people will see it, obviously the next question is, brother, when, when are you turning pro? Um. All right, so, I mean, I leave everything up to my coach at this point. He's never steered me wrong, and he's only been, Ooh. like, uh, I mean, like, everything I need, he's always there for me. So um, I trust his judgment. And he's saying that we're going to look for a quick turnaround fight um, just to get a little bit more experience, maybe go somewhere okay. if we have to travel. Um, but if not, if we can't get an opponent, we can't get something solid, then the next step might be going for that, that pro, like getting into the pro ranks and stuff like that. Hey. Okay. Nothing is yet we're looking like i said uh, only a week after the fight i'm, I'm looking to do some jujitsu tournaments in the in the next few weeks so i i, I really work i really love working on my jujitsu and that's something i feel like i haven't showcased yet other than i mean like in fights i obviously use jujitsu but in right. just a jiu-jitsu sense in a competition form i want to i want to do that i want to use that blue belt that i earned so oh so I, I love that i mean you know maybe you choke them out if you stop punching them in the face i mean you know they, they, there's that <laughs> Hang around. Uh, you know um well let me ask you this uh and and that's great to see and again I, i'm loving hearing the quick turnaround i think people that enjoy watching you fight are really excited to hear the prospect of that in a quick turnaround uh but one thing i, I have to say and again we, we're seeing what's happening things are turning and one cool thing and i really wanted to see how this is going because i know you have this wrestling background bro you were out here splitting time being a coach coaching yeah. full-time, helping the kids out, and also obviously focusing on your own career. Is that something that you're still juggling right now, or how, how has that been for you? Um, so, I, like, I, like I said, I started fighting two years ago. So my first year into this year were the two years where I, I coached full-time and still trained as yeah. much as I could. But once you get in the thick of wrestling season, uh, guys that coach and people that wrestle know this. When you get in the thick of wrestling season, there's, like, some days where you're doing three different competitions a week and Thanks. then practice. Queen, so it's hard to make it to the gym, which I said I live 45 minutes from. So 
I have to get there by seven. I get home at usually around 10. It's hard to get there and then, you know, continue to like get enough sleep and get to work on time and all that stuff. So there were some days I was missing, but, um, I made that commitment beforehand. Um, it's actually a really fun story that, um, uh, I'm, I'm the assistant coach at the high school yeah. coach, uh, Justin Bonatitis actually was a CFFC champ too. So he so fought. That's... Actually, yeah. Two, two of the guys on staff were actually CFFC champs, CFFC champs. He was at 165 and, uh, I, I fought at 205, but it's just funny how things come together. And, uh, that was the staff we had, but, um, in the future, I unfortunately I'm not gonna continue coaching. I'm gonna do everything I can to volunteer, but right. when it's a paid role, I can't take on that responsibility and continue to train at the level I want to train. So, hey man, well like I said, we we got to get you collecting a couple more belts and getting some paydays so you can pull that DC <laughs> off. Like DC goes out there with his kids, we can do that in, in a couple years. Um, yes, I, I think that's super sick that you're doing that. Honestly, the connection that you have with another coach on there that has that same experience. And, and yes, salute to the Lacey Lions. I see people, Lacey Lions, obviously get your love to the Lacey Lions. Um, but you seem sure. like a dude that knows how to have fun. And one thing that I that I peeped, not only from obviously, you know, your fights and everything, yo, my my, my mother ever happened. Um, but uh, what I was asking you, look, I see the mask in the background. My man is the most entertaining Mike Myers out there. And I had, dude, you went viral going out there, you know, saying, you know, with the Mike Myers, you was out here, you know, it wasn't even, um, what's his name? Uh, my man went ahead and reposted it. You was out there boogieing with it, man. Tell us a little about your dance and, and everything. What was going on with the Mike Myers thing? Yeah, uh, that was uh, – honestly, it's been a while. So, like, that first started way back in 2018. I just – one year for Halloween decided I was going to go out. And I've always loved horror. I've always loved Michael Myers. And I was like, I'm going to go get myself a legit mask, do the whole costume, like, do it up. And once I started getting it together, I don't know, I was like, just excited. I was like a little kid. Like, this is one of the things I would liked when I was younger. So I was excited. I was in my kitchen after I got the whole costume together. And uh, I was just – told my brother, I was like, hold up play this song, take a video. And uh, that was the first video that ever got blown up. And uh, Barstool reposted. I wasn't even going to post it on my Instagram. And I finally did. And then Barstool reposted. And all these people reposted. Uh, I did, like, in 2018. It was kind of a joke. But I wasn't even going to post the, post video, the first video. And then I posted on, like, Halloween. And I ended up going, like, viral Barstool. And a bunch of pages reposted it. And that just kind of opened up a new avenue for, like, different things that – Went down to Florida and I shot a video with uh, uh, my one of my fa uh, my aunt's companies and that was all paid for and it was like yeah. new things I'd never done before. Um, I just had a lot of different opportunities. I actually was in uh, Oliver Sims' first uh, song, his music video, like not too long ago. And That's was, sick. Like, some paid for and stuff. It's really cool. So like one of those things that it's a joke, but I mean I enjoy doing it. But it is fun and it opened up a lot of different doors for me. So. It was cool. Fam, you was out here pop locking with the best of them. Like I said, hey, I couldn't believe it. I was like, look at this dude. Not only does he whoop ass, he goes out there, he can dance circles around people as it, well. <laughs> it's fun. It's definitely fun. That's what's up. So let me ask you this, man, because obviously utilizing that as a tool, as an up and coming fighter, somebody like yourself who is obviously, like I said, you have aspirations to continue going forward, turn pro. How are you utilizing social media? Is that when you saw the success of that, was that something for you that you were like, you know what, I'm going to continue, I'm going to lean into this? Or is it just kind of like a one-off, like it happens, it is what it is? No, nah, I mean, it's. I think it's definitely um, something that I, I was going to use, like I used to my advantage. Um, I got fan, like I got a following on TikTok with it now. That's where I kind of keep okay. the Mike Myers um, uh, role going. But like, I, I mean, I get people now to cross over from TikTok to Instagram and follow me fighting and stuff and, I got people that I know from different places, like in the country right. around the world that all started from the Michael Myers stuff. So I can't like talk that down to being not important to me. Cause I mean, I think all ways of getting people eyes on you in the sense of what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I mean, it's important. So, I mean, Conor McGregor showed it the most, like if you could sell and get yourself to become like someone have likability or anything like that, where eyes are on you, I mean, you could make a bigger name for yourself in a quicker way. Absolutely. So I'm not saying I'm going to be out there in an Irish accent cursing people off for that. But I appreciate that. I, we already got enough of those. I enjoy 
<laughs> meet people and stuff like that. So any way I could do that and get a new following, anyone yeah. to come check me out or tune into my fights, I'm all about it. For sure, for sure. Um, let's, let me ask you this, man. Again, being somebody, again, you you you're, you 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 come from a wrestling background, but you have a much more diverse skill set than just being a straight wrestler. Who are some of the athletes and the people that are already doing this that you have either a taken from or b just really admired, looking forward as you're going through this journey? Um, so I mean, let me just start off with saying that I always, when I used to watch UFC growing up, I always hated watching the guys or strict like really dominate with wrestling right Even right like, damn, so no, just, no no josh koshek for you yeah i was like that they're just <laughs> wrestling they're dominating with that. i know how dominating wrestling is but i was like it makes the fight so boring so like i always looked up to guys that were mainly strikers oddly enough but uh, i mean now looking at it from a fighting perspective um i still look up the guys like izzy uh, i love watching guys like okay. Sugar on I mean, uh like guys that really can use their tools and make it look mm -hmm. easy doing it Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that's really cool to watch. And I love guys like Fazeev. I love um, awesome. watching uh, – um, I mean, even Conor when he's coming up, like, I, I love the way his style of fighting. Like, I feel like he brought a different flair to fighting, which is so cool. So that's anyone cool. that's a uh, trailblazer with styles or does stuff, like, well-rounded but makes it look easy, I think it, it makes it a fun fight to watch, though. So. Facts. Oh, dude, I'm glad you dropped, uh, you name dropped uh, Hapiel Fazeev. I, I think he's so, so much fun to watch, man. Yeah, underrated, too. I feel like he oh. doesn't, he's only been in there with real dogs, and any of his losses were against guys that were really, really talented. But uh, yeah. his striking is so clean, and so it's an art form at that point. So, I look oh, dude, I'm so happy you said that, man, because, again, I think people take so much time looking away from not understanding that how, how it's still art. You know what I mean? It's still art, and to be able to sit there, even if it is taking somebody down and controlling them on the ground, the way that they do that, and if you have certain people, I mean, look at the way Damian Maya takes it back. Forget it. Forget Damian Maya. Let's talk about Charles Oliveira, the way he goes in and, and attacks the back and attacks the neck. That's art. The way some of these dudes move, that's art. And even the way, again, you, you jumped in, in somebody's guard and able to go ahead and ground upon them the way that you did in your last time out, that's art as well. So it's really dope to be able to see that and somebody actually acknowledging that. And show that you want to actually be a little bit more diverse. Um, really quick, your coach, you know, Master Rivera over there, how, how is it, again, working with somebody, again, somebody who is, again, has that experience, and, and it seems like, again, the team and everything that you guys are going out there and putting together, working with him day in and day out, what is that like for you? Um, I mean, he's so, he's so hands-on with the fighters. I mean, there's days where he's in there mixing up with us. He's always rolling jujitsu and stuff. And um, he's just so focused on the little details and the, the things that he saw success in when he was fighting and just like his teammates and stuff like that. And he's not somebody that's do this way or don't like train with me or don't, mm -hmm. like, he's not forcing us to do any type of uh, style or anything like that. He knows our styles and he works with our styles. He just puts in his, his two cents of his knowledge behind it. And he's very, I mean, he's uh, very intense on like cage wrestling and like the ins and outs of jujitsu in uh, MMA because it's one of those things that he thinks is just under, under trained. Um, yeah. uh, we'll focus on striking and stuff like that. We do, but it's just uh, we really pay attention to like the ins and outs and the details mm -hmm. of it. And I think that's something that we're I, I could I I learn quickly in that style of teaching where mm -hmm. it's very hands on and very detail oriented. So I mean, he just like I said, he just a wealth of knowledge, and I appreciate whenever he gives this like individual one on time. He he always comes to me like when we go after, after practice or anything like that, or we're working little details, he really like works with each one of us. So it's really cool. Thanks. Oh, dude, it, it must be great to have a coach. And again, that's still young enough to actually still get in there and mix it up with you guys. And, and there has to be something with that, like a humility to that for you guys. And it's like this whole tribe yeah. coming up together, man. That's sick, brother. That's sick. Um, Before we get you out of here, there are some monsters coming from your part of the country, New Jersey, people that are in CFFC that have always been a wealth of talent that has come through that part of the country and that organization. The fact that you're already in that pipeline, what is it? Again, you've seen it. What is it about that part of the country, the, the, the training there? What is it for you that you're seeing that's separating everybody from everybody else? Because you all some dogs out there. Um, I mean, for me and where I'm at, I, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of like that tri-state area where it's like a lot of blue collar work. It's a lot yeah. of like 
kind of just got, like just lunch pail, go to work every day, whether that's training or whatever it is. Like we just do our job, and yeah, uh, we're really trying to get to that next level. And it's it's kind of like what I said in the beginning about being like hungry freshmen when you're first time out on like a college team of sports. Like we just want to make a name for ourselves. We really want to put ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we got guys like I mean like Corey Anderson in our training out here and stuff like that's a guy I look to, up to and I've trained yeah. him to to see that in the room and to see guys like that train it's super humbling and it just makes you realize like what it really takes and yeah. he's one of those guys that is day out training he's a family guy mm -hmm. he's just, like, the right way to do it and I think guys like that really make me want to do it like the way I'm doing it mm -hmm. because they've had success like that and I've seen yeah. how they came up and did that type of style. So, I mean, it's really cool to just come from an area like this where we have so many different, like you said, uh, big names and talent yeah. coming out of here. Oh, it was awesome. And again, the, the fact that you're rolling and moving around from time to time with Corey Anderson, who at this present moment in time might be the best light heavyweight in the world, I, says I, a lot. You thank know? You. I think he's such a well-rounded fighter. Oh, yeah. And even if it was only a handful of times, like I said, every time I've ever been in the same room as him, it's like, damn, this guy's – that high of level and he's just i mean he doesn't walk around and act any type of way mm -hmm, he's mm -hmm. one fail type of guy goes to work and i've trained with guys like Love carl that. robinson and oh, when you're in the tough dude tough. It's, it, it's really cool and he that man is a yeah when i say dog he is a dog that dude is a dangerous fighter a dangerous oh. dude i i love that man the fact that you're in there man it Hey, look, as a obviously fan of, of, of MMA watching, and that's one thing, I'm always looking for people that are up and coming and really doing their thing. And not you you already have that, you can tell the mentality. You, you're in there with the right type of dudes. You're moving around, man. So look, salute to you, brother. Keep keep kicking ass and, and doing your thing. Um, we definitely want to see you holding more belts up. So let me ask you this. If you're going to go out there and turn in pro, does it seem like would you just – stick with in your mind would you want to stick with cffc for your first few fights is that what you're thinking yeah definitely um like i said there's so like it's just such a well-run promotion and they've Absolutely. done promote my, like promote me and promote uh teammates of mine so if i could stay with them i'll stay with them as till the wheels fall off until they push me to a different level or anything like that mm. i love it. run it and uh they're very good with their fighters so last thing before we get you out of here when in your ideal time frame, like I said, because obviously it was at the goal is to be one of the top organizations. How long for you? You've only been doing this for two years. How long until you get to get there in your, like, what's your timetable? Um, I've always told myself and I've done like, so I mean, I've done stuff like manifesting and stuff and writing that yeah. stuff. And I got, I got quotes on it. I told myself um, three years from the, a few months back, once I was getting ready, once I won the title in CFFC, I said, no later than three years am I where I want to be. And uh, some okay. people might long, some people might say that's short. Uh, I know a lot of people think like, you gotta be fighting for this long, this long. I told myself three years. So I'm looking at like 2026, I guess, 2020, uh, 2025, around there. I'm, I'm, I'm you're in the, I want to be a household name at that point. I want to be that. Well, brother, you keep doing what you're doing. And on top of that, keep on putting fire ass TikToks out there. I'm sure sure. <laughs> that's going to go up sure. and, and, and happen more, man. So, brother, much continued success. Uh, before we get you out of here, uh, let the people know where they can find you. Um, I mean, you can check me out on here, obviously. Uh, Luke Fern, I'm on uh, Instagram. I, I'm on Facebook, but I don't really, I only use it for like reposting and stuff. Uh, and and you can, we we grow, man. Don't nobody unless you eight, unless you twelve yeah. or eighty five, you use it. So I hear you, brother. It's yeah. <laughs> you could also catch me on TikTok, um, Luke Fernandez fifty nine, I think. And uh, that's mostly for like my funny content and just joking around, right. nonetheless. But um, yeah, that's and I have a YouTube channel. If anyone wants to subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's in my bio and my uh, on my Instagram. So you can check that out too. That's a lot that's of just videos. I I got a home gym that I train out of too. So that's all the stuff we do down there. A lot of time, money, Craigslist, garage sale, find stuff all down there. So it's cool, but you can check Bro, it. I love that you're being not only your, 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 I mean, the idea of just being a businessman, I can see it already. You're, you're, you're putting your hands in multiple pots. Fam, I'm telling you, I've seen it time and time again. Not enough people do that shit. Brother, continue doing it, man. Continue <laughs> going out there. 
knocking it out, man. It is so fire to see somebody up and coming doing it. Like I said, much continued success. And you know, bro, we got to do this again sometime, man. Absolutely. I'm, Absolutely. I'm never, I, 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 the people at the scrap have been nothing but like cool to me and, and promote me. So anytime that, that you guys want to do this, I love talking. I love talking fights. I love talking to MMA. I love talking in general. So if you guys hey, want to, I'm down whenever you want. We got plenty of shows. We're going we gonna to hit you up, man. We're going to have some fun. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us, brother. We'll talk soon. Everybody. Yes, thank you so much. And the myth, the legend, Lou Fernandez, man. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right, you guys all have a great one. That, sorry about, like I said, some of the uh, the technical difficulties that we had uh, while we were in there, but uh, everything else from there is up and going. Make sure you continue to follow as soon as we get my man's out of here. I don't want him being up here looking all, you know, with his thing all stuck, but it's all good. Uh, make sure you check out the, um, the scrap news for the absolute best in all.